All right. <coughs> Last Sunday, we kind of stopped right in the middle of something um, in our lesson. I'm going to try to pick back up from it. If you wasn't here, you might be lost a minute here, but I'll try to... Uh, Trying to remind you where we was. We was talking about, uh, of course, we're still teaching on prayer. It's probably the last Sunday on prayer. Uh, but we were talking about inroads to the enemy's camp. Does anybody remember that? You that were here. You weren't here, Matthew. Uh, inroads to the enemy's camp. We read there about uh, 1 Samuel 27 and 8. I'll read that again. It said, And David and his men went up and, um, and invaded the, the Geshurites and the Gezerites and the Amalekites. For those nations were of old, of the old inhabitation of the land, as thou goest to sure, even unto the land of Egypt. And uh, as David, there in the, uh, verse 10, he was asked, the king asked David, said, Whether have you made a road today? It's what the king had asked David. And the king was asking if he had made a road in, into the enemy's camp. If he had made a way to get into the enemy. To get to the enemy. So that's what we, we was, had started on last Sunday. Uh, turn with me to Matthew chapter 11. And then Luke 16. I'll we'll read two verses here. You may ask this morning, and uh, what what do you mean by making an inroad? Especially those of you that wasn't here, or how do I make an inroad? Uh, that's what we're going to read here this morning. Matthew eleven and twelve it says, "And from the days of John the Baptist until the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force." And then flip over to Luke 16. Luke 16 and verse 16. It says, The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached, and every man presseth into it. <clears throat> what is Jesus talking about here when He says the kingdom of God? Uh, he's talking about the, the about us assaulting the, the uh, enemy's domain by reaching into the heaven with an unwavering prayer. Uh, he's talking about his, his living authority through His chosen instrument, the church. That's, that's us. Um, when the kingdom of God is mentioned, it's almost always in reference to a, uh, uh, a devil's cast out or, or someone being healed. Uh, it's almost always Jesus exhibiting His power over the power of the enemy. What does the Scripture there say? Matthew 11 says, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. And the violent take it by force. Talking about the enemy. Um, when the kingdom of God there's a, is mentioned, there's talking about most always when it's mentioned about devils being cast out or someone being healed. Uh, he told it, his apostles to go into the city and whosoever would receive them, he, he said, heal the, their sick. Tell them the kingdom of heaven of God had come unto them. Uh, everywhere we had we go, the kingdom of God should be established. Amen. The kingdom of God. We uh, establishing the kingdom of God on this earth. You may think it be thinking about you know the kingdom heaven or something far off, but we're talking about the the power, the working of God, His kingdom, which is through the making up of us, the church here on this earth. Uh, and we know the enemy uh, doesn't like the kingdom of God, does he? Amen? Right, in you. Sure. 
Right. Uh, it's within us. Um, so everywhere we go, the kingdom of God should be established. Amen? Uh, not necessarily that people, uh, people know that you're a Christian, but we say the kingdom of God should be established. Amen? That's an inroad should be created. A disturbance in the enemy's territory. It's easy to just leave things alone, isn't it? You know, it's easy. You know what? I just won't deal with that. Uh, you know, you may be passing, let's just be honest this morning. You know, you may pass someone on, on in your everyday life and, you know, we can witness to them. We can show them the better way. Uh, but you know what? The easy thing is what? Just keep walking, right? That's the easy way out. Amen. But whenever we, amen, get disturbed, the enemy's territory, praise God. But more than that, setting up God's kingdom within hostile borders where the devil is saturated at, where he has his camp out. Amen. Reaching out uh, other than where we're just at. Amen. We may have this this area where we're at spiritually established our home it may be established in the kingdom of God but what about out there what about others around us that the enemy has a hold of that's the enemy's territory amen and are we uh, doing our part this morning praise God to be a disturbance to the enemy or is the devil not worried about us disturbing his plan Praise God. Something to think about this morning. Uh, and the uh, greatest factor in that comes through prayer. Praise God. Uh, it means more than just going to church this morning. It means more than just paying our tithes on Sunday morning. It's more than just shouting hallelujah. It means more than just getting enough to make it through day to day. Uh, it means more than having someone see your holiness attire and asking if you're a Christian, it's more than that this morning. It means more than, than shaking a leg to a, a fast song. Uh, it means war this morning. That's what it means. Amen. Going to war with the enemy. Uh, it means conflict, danger, <laughs> taking what the enemy possesses. Now what we talked about some last Sunday about taking back what the devil stole from us taking back your possessions that you once had that the devil has stole from you amen uh, there are basically four different kinds of people there are those that are doing nothing and are losing everything they have gotten in God there are those simply holding on to what they have there are those that are doing like David did to the Amalekites chasing the enemy trying to get back what was stole from them. And then there are those that are really furthering God's kingdom. Amen. Which one are we this morning? Praise God. Are we losing? Are we holding? Are we regaining? Or are we gaining? Praise God. I want to be gaining, don't you? Yes. Yes. Amen. Unpossessed. Possessions. Yeah. Amen. I love that. Praise God. Unpossessed possessions. Things that God has available for us that is for our possession, but it's unpossessed by us. Amen. That's right where the devil wants us at. Amen. To not possess what God has for us. I said it last Sunday. I'll say it again. God has so much more for us than what we have. Amen. Are we losing? Are we holding? Are we regaining? Or are we gaining this morning? Amen. Maybe you've lost this morning. Amen. Regain what you lost. If you've already regained it, gain some more. Amen. Praise God. James 5 and 16, the latter part of that verse says, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Is prayer very important this morning? Amen. That scripture said the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man 
availeth much. Right. Praise God. Amen. It's much. Not just a little bit, but a lot. Amen. To avail means to have or exercise force. That's what avail means. Yes. To have or exercise force. Prayer forces its way into the enemy domain and conquers enemy forces, putting them to flight. A prayer violently snatches souls out of the mouth of hell. A prayer knocks the giant down, takes his sword from the sheath, and then slays him with his own weapon. That's prayer this morning. A prayer makes inroads into the enemy's camp. Prayer this morning. We're talking about inroads. Making the inroads into the enemy's camp. Amen. Going into the territory that the devil possesses. Praise God. Prayer makes that happen this morning. Amen. Prayer is that important. So again, amen. Let's be a church that is gaining. Let's be a people that is gaining in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's don't be losing this morning. I don't like losing nothing. Does anybody else? I don't even like losing when I play games. <laughs> anybody else like that? I like to win. Amen. Uh, the same way spiritually this morning, I like to win spiritually. Praise God. I don't want to be losing. Amen. Amen. I want to hold what I have, but I also want to be gaining on top of it. Amen. Amen. Don't let the devil steal from you this morning. The Bible says he's a thief. Amen. That's who he is. That's what he does. And he's a master at it, ain't he? Amen. We're going to move on in our lesson here. Kind of take a different direction. but Make it inroads into the camp. Let's, let's be a people that does that. Amen. It's not just about me and mine. Amen. That, that's not all that God cares about making it to heaven. It's just me. Amen. God cares about everyone, doesn't he? Amen. And, and we, if God ha has saved you this morning, amen, shine that light. What's the scripture says? You are a, a light, a city on a hill that cannot be hid. Amen. So as a Christian, we, are, we have a light that we shine. They sing the song. Uh, this little light of mine, let it shine. Amen. Let's let our light shine this morning into the enemy's territory. Praise God. Turn with me to Exodus chapter 17, if you would. Now remember, we started out, let me back up here. We started out teaching on the results of prayer. I guess a month ago, and that's still kind of the title we're going under this morning, the results of prayer. Uh, amen. There, we can see results. I like it when we see results from praying, don't you? Amen. Amen. It's not just so we can say we get out and pray. Amen. Mean it. What you pray, praise God, be consistent in it, and you will see a results in your prayer this morning. You hear that? Amen. If you will be consistent, and if you'll be sincere, amen, if you'll have that effectual, fervent prayer, amen, you will see results. Praise God. How many knows we need to pray for our leaders this morning? Amen. Definitely. This little section we're going to do here just for a few minutes, and we're going to talk about praying for the, our leaders, our pastors. Amen. Exodus 17 and 12 says, But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon, and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, excuse me, the one on the one side and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady unto the going down of the sun. You may remember this story here, you Bible readers, but um, it's where... They were in war, and as long as Moses' hands were held up, they would win. And you ever held your hands up for a long period of time? 
He begins to hurt, don't it? After a while, that's what happened. His hands got tired. If his hands would come down, they'd begin to lose. So they, they set up rocks underneath his hands to hold them up. We ain't going to lose this battle. Uh, so he, his, what did it say? Aaron and her stayed up his hands. Moses was their leader, right? And so this, what we're talking about here, prayer and helping our, our leaders, that's what Aaron and her were doing here. Uh, they stayed up the hands whenever the, their leader got tired. Amen. You mean leaders get tired? Sure they do. Amen. They're humans just like us. Praise God. Amalek came against the Israelites to do battle. The Bible says that Moses told Joshua, choose at us out men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. As long as Moses could hold the rod in the air, the Israelites would overcome the Amalekites. But when Moses' hands became tired and his arms began to fall, they started losing. As I already said, uh, Aaron and Hur came to Moses and instead of kicking him down and being upset because he, was, uh, because he was not his normal self, they realized that Brother Moses there needed some help holding up the rod of God in the air. They set Moses down on the rock, stood on one on each side, holding his arms up, relieving Moses of some of the burden. Praise God. As this took place, the Israelites routed the Amalekites and achieved a great victory that day. Amen. I understand the importance here this morning of, of our pastors and his relationship to the church. It, it is important this morning. Amen. But we know that our leaders need prayer this morning. Amen. Our pastors, our leaders of, the, of, of uh, all over the world need prayer this morning. Amen. It's important to, to pray for our leaders. God uses, amen, the leader to lead the flock, the pastor. Feed the flock, spur the saints on, hold the word of God high. As long as the the man of God is doing that. The church will prosper. Amen. It will. Uh, but he is just that this morning. A man of God. A man. A man of God. Amen. I try to daily. Uh, it is important. Praise God. Instead of being upset. At his change of countenance, instead of thinking he's mad at you, instead of looking for another church with a nicer pastor, you know, we may, some may call different kinds of, of faces, and, uh, but uh, some may think they're mad, but, you know, that ain't always the case. Uh, praise God, but find an altar and pray. That's the important thing this morning. Amen. Find an altar, lift. His hands up, so to speak, as we read about Moses, with prayer. That's how you hold up the hands of the leader this morning. It may not be like they did with physical rocks, but with prayer. That's that rock this morning. Amen. That we help hold up the hands. Amen. Of others. Pray for him. Amen. His entire family. It will bring great rewards this morning. It will. Prayer. The results of prayer. That's just another result in prayer. Amen. Praying for our leaders. Praise God. Leviticus 6 and 13, I'll read it real quick, says, The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. Amen. The keepers of the flame. Do we have any keepers of the flame this morning? If you don't keep your flame, it'll burn out, won't it? He said, The fire shall ever be burning ever be burning upon the altar, it shall never, never. He didn't give us no opportunity to quit, did he? Never go out. The Old Testament times of sacrifice and burning offerings, God was very particular as to what type of offering he would accept. <clears throat> the offering had to be perfect, without spot or blemish. Not only did the offering have to be perfect, the offerer had to be clean also. The blind, halt, maimed, and unclean were not allowed to approach God. 
Uh, the principle was simple. Bring God the best. <laughs> That's what God wanted. He wanted the best. Oftentimes, we are trying to do good or better, but this is not God's will in our life this morning. It's not God's will for us just to do better or do good. Amen. He wants our best. That's what God wants from us this morning. Uh, good and better are always the worst enemies of best. All right? Good and better are always the worst enemies of best. Amen. Once the offering was brought, the real test would then take place. The test of fire. There were some offerings that the priest could put the fire to, but generally as a rule, only God could put the fire to the offering to consume it. If the priest did, didn't follow the guidelines exactly, uh, they would fall to the same fate as the sons of Aaron. As priests, they were responsible for the maintenance of the temple fire, yet they let the fire go out from off the altar. Instead of entreating God in their fright, they tried to rekindle the fire with strange fire or fire from the, the flesh pots when it was to be God and only God who sent fire upon the altar. Uh, they were supposed to keep the fire going. Uh, that was the priest's job. Keep the fire burning on the altar. Amen. That seems simple this morning, don't it? That was all their job was, is just keep it burning. Don't let the fire go out. Uh, keep the fire burning on the altar. Take out the ashes of yesterday's sacrifices and put the new sacrifice up on the altar. They let the fire go out and died because of it. God said, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. So the priest, he's saying, your job is always to keep the fire burning I will send the fire, just keep it going. Does that make sense to us this morning? Amen. God will send the fire. Amen. Our responsibility this morning is just to keep it going. The Bible says in Proverbs 26 and 20, He said, where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. Without wood, without kindling the fire, without a consistent awareness of how the fire is burning, the fire will go out in the night and you will not know it. You may be wondering what the priests of the Old Testament and their job to keep the flame burning have to do with us this morning. It's very simple. Amen. You, we are responsible for the fire that is upon our altars. Service, songs, message, and life. Whether we have revival or not, it is determined by us and the fire we possess in our bosom. The sobering truth of the matter is we will die this morning if we let the fire go out. Praise God. God will send the fire, but we must maintain it this morning by placing the wood of prayer upon it daily. Right. Amen. You hear me this morning? Amen. Prayer, uh, putting prayer upon it daily. That's putting wood on the fire. That's keeping that fire burning. Amen. If we neglect prayer, amen, we will let the fire go out <laughs> by neglecting prayer, by neglecting studying God's Word. Amen. That is putting wood upon our spiritual fire. Amen. Don't let your fire go out this morning. The Bible says in 1 Peter 2 and 5, you also as lively stones are built upon a spiritual house and a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. He says we are a priesthood. 
man and woman, boy, girl, every born again believer has been called into that royal priesthood. Therefore, we have the responsibility of offering up spiritual sacrifices. The Apostle Paul, he supports Peter in Romans 12. In verse 1, he said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a, anybody know it? A living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. There are many who don't think they're responsible for the fire of God that is manifested in their lives and in their churches. Uh, amen. Some uh, seems to think that God just sends the fire at random and upon whomsoever He desires at a particular time. Amen. But that's not the case this morning. It's always God's will for us to have the fire of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Burning up upon us. Amen. Consistently and lighting a path to those around us. So, the fire is more than just for me, isn't it? It's also to help light that path for others around us. Amen? Praise God. Jesus taught us clearly in Matthew 5 and 14. I quoted the scripture earlier. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. He said, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and giveth light unto all that are in the house. And then verse 16, he said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. What was their source of light? Fire. Think back in the days. There was no electricity, was it? They didn't go flip the switch and turn the lights on. They had to kindle the fire, light a candle. A flame had to be burning to produce light, right? Amen. Jesus said to let your fire shine so they may see your good works and by doing so, glorifying the Father. Not glorifying me. That's not why, amen, we shine the light that they may see our good works. They may glorify us. But no, that it may glorify Jesus Christ. Amen, our Father. Amen. We want people to come into our churches and stay, don't we? Sure we do. Folk, uh, people cannot warm their hearts where there is no fire, right? Amen. Prayer is the only thing that will bring that fire this morning. Amen. Prayer. That's what it boils down to this morning. Amen. I know we've taught so much on, on this prayer and so much of the benefits of prayer and the, the results of prayer. Amen. It boils down to mine and your prayer life this morning. Amen. My relationship with God boils down to my prayer life. Amen. To my communion with God. That's what brings revival. That's what brings fire. What did I say last Sunday? If you ain't seeking, you ain't receiving. Amen. That's prayer this morning. Amen. If we want to receive from God. Amen. If we want revival in our land. Amen. If we want the fire burning. Amen. It comes through seeking God. It comes through prayer. Amen? There are a lot of offerings going on. But it seems that there, a very little of them are being accepted by God. What did he say there in the scripture we read? I'll read it again. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God. Amen. Acceptable unto God. There may be a lot of offerings going on, but it seems that very little are being accepted by God. Amen. Our churches are full of singers, preachers, musicians, teachers, and the list goes on, but amen, is a very little fire. 
a time and time again, God will send the fire. But if we're not careful, we let it go out. Praise God. Amen. God will send the fire this morning. God will send the fire in your life this morning. Amen. But you know what? I got to maintain it. I got to keep it burning. I've never been able to set a fire and walk away from it and it always burn. Anybody else? Amen. Always. Every time we've had to light a fire and keep it going, I've had to continually put wood on it. Continually check it. Amen. Is it still got wood on the fire? Amen. Is it burning? Right. Bunch it up. Hey, praise God. Keep the flame burning. Amen. Right. That's right. That is exactly right. Amen. Make sure you don't have anything in your life this morning that would put out the fire. Praise God. That would put out the fire of God. Because we have to have it. Amen. Amen. We need the fire of the Lord to come upon us. A prayer life that will retain and maintain it once it has come. Praise God. That's the difference this morning. Amen. Uh, is maintaining that fire when, when God has sent it. Once God has sent it. John the Baptist said, I indeed baptize you with water into, unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Acts chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, the Bible says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, Ye have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Jesus, in what we call the Great Commission, told them to preach the gospel to all nations, to teach them and to baptize the converts. But we find here in Acts that before they did any of those things, they were instructed to go into Jerusalem and wait for the promise. He is saying, don't preach, don't teach, don't baptize anyone until you get the promise. Amen. Until uh, the fire of the Holy Ghost is burning in your heart. Praise God. What's the promise? Amen. It's, it was fire. The Holy Ghost and fire. A fire that would burn in the midnight hour. Amen. A, a fire that would purge sin. A fire that would burn on the chopping block. I understand that as a Christian, our banner is the cross. But let us be honest this morning, there is no one hanging on the cross anymore. The King of glory now sits at the right hand of God. Uh, amen. I believe we could rightfully say that as much as a cross, a tongue of, of fire could be symbolized. A symbol of Amen, the Pentecostal church. Amen, when those men and women spoke, sinners' hearts melted like wax upon fire. Praise God. Amen, those, the men you, you read in the, in the Scriptures, in the New Testament, and these men here, amen, they, they had the fire burning in their life. Amen, they had a walk with God. It makes a difference this morning in our lives. They were just ordinary men, amen, that continued to get down on their knees and pray and seek God, that God fill them with the power and that fire from above. Amen. If we ever need, needed the fire in our churches, it's today. You believe that? Amen. If there was ever a time when we needed to keep the flame alive in our lives, it's right now. Amen. It's not yesterday. But it's today. Praise God. It's right now that we need that fire. That consuming fire. 
Praise God to burn within us. There was once a Scottish village that suffered a great tragedy once a uh, one freezing cold winter night. Through the night it became so cold that the fire in the village went out. Every hearth had lost its fire. Several of the men met in the town square finding out that no one in the entire village had a fire to give to the others. Their eyes immediately searched the mountains and behold, one lone cabin with smoke ascending from its chimney. They climbed that mountainside in the freezing Arctic winds. Though they would slip and fall, they might, or they kept moving. They knew that their families would die without fire. Once they reached the top of the mountain, they knocked on the man's door and explained their dilemma. He was more than glad to let them ignite their torches from the fire that burned upon his heart. Amen. Watch those men as they journey back down the mountain. They turn their backs to the, to the wind, shielding the flames from, the, from being extinguished. They slip and fall, sliding down the mountain, but they keep the flame protected. Why? Because there is life in the flame. Amen. So they, kept, so they must keep it burning. Praise God, there's life in the flame this morning. Amen. I want to make two points here this morning. Uh, the man on the mountain saved the lives of every one of those villagers by keeping his fire burning. And two, the men who received a second chance from that man respected and understood the importance of keeping the fire burning even more so than ever before. <laughs> Amen. After their fire went out and they had to go through all the trouble to get that flame relit. So then they understood that more than ever before the importance of keeping the fire burning. Amen. Have you ever lost your fire before? Amen. And it take you for this long process. Amen. The things that we might have done in our life that caused us to lose the fire. Amen. And then here we have to go this long process back to the fire. Amen. Learn from that this morning. Amen. Realize the importance of just keeping my fire burning. That I don't have to do that again. I bet them men, that story said, you know what? My fire will never go out again. I ain't going to climb that mountain again in that freezing cold. My fire will always be burning. Why? Because they had learned the hard process of when you let the fire go out. Hey, man, let's keep the flame burning this morning. We are living in a cold and dark hour. Wouldn't you agree with that this morning? Amen. Men, what's the scripture say? Love darkness rather than light. Amen. Because their deeds are evil. Uh, we have a calling on and in our lives a call to burn. To be a light in the midst of darkness. To be a light that shines so bright the lost world can see the pathway to Calvary. One of John Wesley's critics was inquiring how he get got such crowds to come and hear him preach John Wesley's friend told him Mr. Wesley spends much time in prayer in the prayer closet asking God to pour the fire out upon him Mr. Wesley comes to the church on fire the people come to watch him burn <laughs> amen let us be honest with ourselves this morning many of our people have allowed the flame to go out, amen, to die, to flicker, amen, if not to mere ashes. The world is not waiting for a new definition of the gospel, but a demonstration of the power of the gospel. You hear that this morning? Amen, the world is not looking for a new, God, uh, new definition of the gospel, but a new demonstration of the power of the gospel. Amen. We need to throw ourselves upon the altar. Praise God. Cry out to God until He sends that fire upon you this morning. Amen.
take a hold of the, the horns of the altar until God sends it upon you. Amen. We must, listen to this this morning, we must alter our outlook on the altar because the altar can alter your life. Amen. We must alter our outlook on the altar because the altar can alter your life. The altar is not a place to take a, a pit stop at the end of the sermon. The altar is a place to die on. Amen. The altar is a place to lay yourself on and cry out to God. Amen. Here I am, Lord. Send the fire. Praise God. As bad as we may hate to admit it, some way or somehow, amen, we, maybe we've let the flame go out. The only answer to it this morning is prayer. Prayer is the only answer to receiving the fire and is the only answer to maintaining that fire through prayer. Praise God. Keep the fire burning this morning. Be a keeper of the fire. Praise God. There's much more left that we could say about prayer. Amen. We could probably never get to the end of it, the subject of prayer. Uh, but, you know, my heart's desire this morning that these studies we've been studying since August has helped you somehow. Amen. It's stirred my own soul. Praise God to pray more, to seek God more, because that's where the answer's at, church. That's where the fire's at. That's where revival's at. Amen. It's in prayer. Praise God. The importance... And the power of prayer will only be found out by those who have the courage to fall headlong into it. Amen. That's the only way for you to really find out this morning. Amen. Is to fall headlong into prayer, to seeking God. Prayer is the key to all understanding and spiritual insight. Prayer, it is the answer to revival. Prayer, it is the answer to a productive and successful Christian life and walk with God. Amen. In all you're doing, pray. Praise God. In everything that you do, pray. Praise God. Amen. Let's be a church. Let's be a people of prayer. Amen. A people of seeking God. Amen. I think that's what God's just waiting on. Amen. God wants to send the fire, and He will send the fire. Amen. Praise God if we'll get down. Amen. And seek His face. Amen. Until He sends it. He may not send it the first time you get down. Probably not. Amen. But you know what? If you'll keep praying, if you'll keep seeking God, Amen, He will pour it out upon you. He will. Amen. Let's stand this morning.